Hi, Wright Buddy here from Backroad Buddies of Redtail Lodge, and the video we want to share with you today is about tips and tricks from Season 3. So at the end of every season, we kind of look back and think of the lessons we've learned, and most of them this year are just little tidbits. They're not really anything revolutionary <laughs> or rocket science, but we hope you get a little, learn at least one little item that might help you or give you ideas on how to solve your own problems. So these are not in any particular order, so let's begin with tip one. If you just want to jump to a particular tip, you can look in the description below. We have laid out a timeline that it gives you about approximately the um, time in within the video of where each tidbit is. Now tip one is to add your pasta to the pot with the water from the very beginning instead of waiting for the water to come to a boil. Now we generally cook with whole wheat pasta which takes a little longer to cook but just cooking pasta in general takes a lot of fuel out of your stove. Um, so we found that we ran a little experiment at home in controlled environment because the air temperature affects it. So in 72 degrees we did both methods and we found that we saved about not only did we save fuel but we also saved time in cooking. So it it saved us about 24 to 25 percent in both time and fuel to cook that pasta if we put it in first with the water cold and then cooked it from there instead of waiting till the water boils and put the pasta in. Now tip two is to use a portable monitor along with our laptop so we can view the same thing. The way we have our van set up, it's really hard to find a comfortable position where we're both sitting next to each other to be able to view the same screen. So this nice little portable monitor allows us to sit facing each other, which is the normal way we, we lounge in here. We can watch the same thing like a YouTube video. So the way this works is it's just this little, nice little portable monitor is really light and thin. Um, it fits right in my laptop bag along with my laptop. There's no separate power cord. It's connected to the laptop via USB-C cord and that's also what powers it. So very simple to use, doesn't take up much space and we really love it. So tip three is to use or so hem tape on the bottom of the screen to hold the magnets in. So this screen across our sliding door was something we added for season three. And it's really a patio screen or intended for a sliding patio door, but we modified it. And if you look at our prep for season three, you'll, uh, you'll see how we made it. And we originally put these magnets in the bottom of the screen with hot glue and in the heat and stuff that didn't really hold. So then we tried um, some tape like Gorilla Tape or, and that didn't really seem to hold either. And so the solution we found was to actually take hem tape and hand sew that on. So we actually did that during the season. And uh, we really love the screen with the magnets. It's really worked out great. Now tip four is about the awning that we have here on the side of the van. It doesn't do very well in the wind and we've had issues in the past where gusts of wind comes up and damages the awning. So for a little extra security this year we got in the habit of if there was a chance of the wind kicking up and to give us time to take the awning down and not damage it is we actually use ratchet straps to secure it to something like a heavy picnic table or something. So if the wind does kick up, at least it won't be immediately ripped off the roof of our van. So that, I mean, we never had an issue with that again, but hopefully that, that'll help save us in the future. So tip five is when you are done cooking in the Instant Pot, especially if you're using the saute setting, is to remove the liner from the pot the heating element in the bottom of the Instant Pot stays pretty hot for quite some time, even after the unit is off. 
And so if you've taken, especially if you've taken most of the food out of here and there's just a little bit left, it'll burn and get burned on there and make it really hard to clean. So removing it right away when you turn it off, then you won't have that issue and it'll make it so much easier to clean this when you're done. Tip number six is to drink your cold drinks from an insulated mug, such as this one. Um, when you have a tiny little freezer with you, ice is at a premium, so drinking from an insulated cup will keep your drinks cold for a long period of time and may even uh, reduce the need for ice at all if you've already had the drink chilled to begin with. Tip seven is to refill your ice cube trays in the evening so that they are frozen by the time you hit the road the next day, especially if it's a travel day. Um, we do have lids on our little trays, but I don't really trust that to be a real tight seal. So when we're driving down the road, I really don't want that water spilling out of the ice cube trays. So I try to remember to fill those at night so they have overnight to freeze before we drive down the road. Tip eight is to stop drinking liquids about an hour into or two before we go to bed. Um, this is, I don't know if it's just due because we're older and normally when we're at home, we get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. It's a little harder to get up in the middle of the night in our camper van to go to the bathroom. We do have a, an emergency toilet in, in the van. So we don't actually have to get out of the van although we don't really like to use that very much and it's just a pain to crawl out of bed and so we just try to train our bladders not to do, go in the middle of the night and it works for the most part so um, that's kind of our advice. Tip nine is to use a strip of gaffer's tape along the bottom of the fridge to keep items from sliding out of the fridge. Um, this is especially true because we really pack our fridge pretty tight and especially if we're not quite level and we're on a little bit of slope the surface is pretty smooth and items just keep sliding out if you don't have a little bit of friction there to keep it from sliding. So tip 10 is to use silicon adhesive to attach these metal plates to the window. Now at the beginning of the last season we had modified the shades from Van Do It to use these magnets and these metal plates instead of the suction cups that come with it. However, when this van heats up, especially if it's been sitting in the sun, when you go to pull this off, we had used VHB tape before and it would pull those plates off. It helped a little bit if you would slide them off the magnets instead of pulling them straight back, but we found that when they would come off we'd use silicon adhesive to put them back on and those seem to hold up in the heat much better. Tip 11 is to refill the iced tea pitcher right when you empty it with water and throw it in the fridge so the water can start getting cold right away and then when you steep some more tea I normally steep it in a little bit of water and then add it to the water in the pitcher so then it cools it down right away and you again need less ice. Ice is at a premium and plus then you have nice um, cold tea to drink right away when you make it and don't have to wait for it to cool down in the fridge. Tip 12 is to use electric tea kettle to heat up your water for your dishes instead of using the water heater when your batteries are getting low. Um, so when we're really trying to conserve on battery power in the van the water heater takes a lot of electricity and it's also heating up a much larger amount of water I think it's a three gallon tank than what we actually need to wash dishes with so I would just heat up this small amount of water in the electric tea kettle boiling and then add you know the cool water from the tap to cool it down to where I could actually <laughs> stick my hands in it and that usually was plenty of water to wash our our evening dishes in. Tip 13 is to use Gorilla Tape to repair things 
like a plastic bin that you need a watertight seal on. This is our bin that we store in our sink and we actually use for our rinse water when we're doing our dishes so it needs to hold water. Well even before the season began last year we had left it out on the counter, pulled away in the van, it fell off, busted about a quarter size hole, you can't really see it, it's, the hole's about this big. And we just taped it up with Gorilla Tape and it holds water. It's worked perfectly all season and so much so that we're not even planning on replacing this for season four. Just keep using it because it seems to be fine. Now tip 14 was to switch our fridge over to DC power. Now the isotherm fridge that we use here can run off of AC or DC power. So we could keep, we initially hooked it up to AC because that was easier. Um, but during the season, we decided to switch it over to DC and we actually had to run another um, wire over from our electrical box to get DC power over there with the right gauge wire and hooked it up. And the reason to do that is because your fridge actually runs off of DC. So if you hook it into AC, not only does your van, assuming you're running off of batteries, has to convert DC power to AC through your inverter, run it across an AC current, which then goes to your fridge, which converts it back to DC to actually use it. So that's very efficient. You lose a little power on the way to do that. So we decided to hook it up directly to DC. Now we also included where we hooked it in, we have a little plug so we can unplug it from DC power when we're in the off season, we wanna pull the fridge out of the van. Tip 15 is to put a piece of tape over the temperature control on the fridge to keep from knocking it and changing the setting. We ran into this a lot because we packed this fridge pretty full and we were constantly bumping this temperature control and not realizing it. So initially we put a little um, mark with the magic marker or Sharpie so we'd know if it, the setting was changed, but that still meant we had to keep checking it. So what we did was, let's see if I can do this on camera. We just took a piece of tape and covered that setting up so we wouldn't knock it. And that solved our problem. Tip 16 is to take a cheap little printer scanner with you if you need to sign a lot of documents while you're traveling on the road. Unfortunately I had some family issues to deal with and I had a lot of documents that I needed to sign and get back in a timely manner. So it was, so actually during the season we went out and just bought a little printer scanner, secured it to the shelf with a bungee cord, and I would receive documents electronically print them off, sign them, scan them back in, and ship them off again electronically. And so that saved a lot of time than trying to go around and find a place to get something printed and scanned and, and whatever. So it was well worth this little bit of space it took up in the van for the time it saved us. Tip 17 is screwdrivers, Allen wrenches, and knives are not a good substitute for a corkscrew. <laughs> This we kind of learned the hard way. We're not big wine drinkers, but we had picked up a bottle of wine and it was our anniversary. And so we thought, oh, well, we'll open the bottle of wine for our anniversary. Well, we had no corkscrew. We went around to all our neighbors in the campground. Nobody had a corkscrew we could borrow. So we were using knives and screwdrivers and, and Allen wrenches to try to get a hole through the cork or get, pop the cork out or push it into the bottle. And I don't know how long we struggled. It seemed like an hour. And unfortunately, the cork was also a synthetic cork. So we would manage to get a hole penetrated through the cork. And then as soon as we pulled out like the Allen wrench or whatever, that synthetic cork would <laughs> collapse back in and seal that hole back up. And then we finally got it pushed in. And because of the pressure of pushing it in, the red wine squirted out of the bottle into our eyes, up under the ceiling of the van. So. Lesson learned, bring a corkscrew with you. <laughs> now tip 18 is kind of real specific to people who happen to record video using an external microphone. Um, this had us perplexed for quite some time. I was in a campground, I was recording an intro for one of our videos, and I 
recorded it and went back on my laptop and started to go editing it and there was this loud music playing on the video and I'm like where did that music come from so I recorded it again and I this time I paid attention there was no music playing same thing I go back there's music in the video so I did this a couple times did some experiments and then actually heard, instead of music I heard a radio announcer <laughs> so I'm like hmm, I must be picking up a radio station. And after doing some Googling, sure enough, because of the uh, microphone is mounted and there's a cord that connects it to the camera, because of the length of that cord and it's not shielded, it acts as an antenna. So if the frequency of a local radio station just happens to be at the right frequency for that length of the cord, it will actually pick up the radio station. So that was very interesting. So in order to solve it, I'm like, oh, it's not shielded. So I just took some aluminum foil, wrapped the cord of the microphone connection, and that seemed to solve the problem. But uh, so hopefully if you ever run into that, <laughs> you'll know how to solve it now. <laughs> well, hopefully at least one of those tips helped you out in some way. So if you want more details, look in the description below. There's a link to our related blog post, so check that out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. Ta-ta for now. Mm -hmm.